Hi, I'm Kirby Dolak from LCTV. Today we're here with Sarah Donovan and Christy Bates from the Castle Rebuild Committee, the CRC. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Good. Very good. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you became involved in the Castle Rebuild and your current roles in that committee? Sure. So I joined uh, Littleton Children's Fund, which is a nonprofit that has uh, built the original Castle in the Trees in 1991 and has maintained it ever since. I joined probably five years ago. I was approached by another board member and she said, you know, do you want to help with the playground? It's only, you know, two cleanups a year. And we used to do the can drive at the dump once a month, you know, one, I'm sorry, one month a year. And I said, sure. And I was on the board a year. And then Christy approached us. <laughs> um, I have, I'm in, live in Westford. I have an eight and 10 year old now. And when they were little, we used to come to Castle in the Trees. It was one of our favorite playgrounds. And um, my uh, nephew, Aiden Malio, passed away in July of 2012. And soon after that, I approached uh, Sarah and a couple other members on the board at that time to see if we could do anything um, in memory of him. And that became Aiden's Playground mm -hmm. uh, with their full support. And I uh, became the treasurer the day after I met with them. So uh, that's how I became involved. And uh, right now, Sarah and I are the only two members of the Littleton uh, Children's Fund. Very good. Very good. So the Castle on the Trees is coming up on its 25th birthday. Hey, elaboration. Mm -hmm. Where is it actually located so people know where to look? That's a very good question. It is at 300 King Street. And 300 King Street, um, just underwent renovations sponsored by the Park and Rec Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have the new basketball courts there. They've got a beautiful parking lot. And uh, if you drive in, Castle in the Trees is set to the back right. Um, okay. And interesting, uh, when this was built in 1991, um, I spoke with a couple people who were involved in the build and they said they approached the town looking for a space and they were hoping to find something that was uh, a little bit more within view of the street and uh, but this is the parcel that they were given and so that's it's set back but it's it's under the trees so there's a lot of shade which is why it is a popular and hence spot the too. name castle and trees the name castle excellent trees. excellent so um what's happened with the playground that you guys are planning to either replace or update it well, it's, it was built in 1991, and it's built of wood, and it had a life expectancy of about 15 years, mm. and it's now coming up on 25 years because it was well-maintained. Um, but there are you know, some repair issues, and we just found that it would be more costly to repair them than it would to, be repla to replace it. Mm. So we, will be, we plan to replace it, and we plan to use the same company, Leathers & Associates. So it will, look, it will look similar, but it will now be made of composite instead of wood, so it lasts a lot longer. So how did you come up with the design? Who was involved? So we, um, the original builder um, was, uh, or designer, was Leathers and Associates mm -hmm. in 19, back in 1991. And um, we, well, let's step back. So we, we are using Leathers and Associates, but um, back in, gosh, was it a year ago now? Almost a year ago, mm -hmm. we started a survey. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, pictures of uh, playgrounds that look like leathers and then we had two other vendors and we had pictures of those on a big uh, poster board and we uh, did a, we had a survey out to people what what do you like about these types of playgrounds um, to find out uh, if people wanted more of the plastic looking ones mm -hmm. or or the the wood like stretcher like uh, castle is now mm -hmm. and uh, we also asked them what they wanted in a playground and we had oh, 130 or 40 responses and this was put up at the library over the summer in various points so we had those responses and uh, based on our responses leathers look like the direction that the people want to go. They liked the look of Castle in the mm -hmm. Trees and they wanted to stick with that type of a playground. So we contracted with Leathers and um, in June they came out to, uh, the, one of the designers came out to uh, the two elementary schools, uh, Russell Street they, um, and uh, Shaker, Shaker Lane. Mm -hmm. um, the kids were all given a piece of paper ahead of time and asked to design the perfect playground and so we had all the all the entries or all the designs from the kids which was great and then the designer met with the third and fourth graders at Russell Street and the pre-k through two at Shaker Lane um, they came ten minutes two to three classes ten minutes at a time mm -hmm. and he asked them do you know about Castle in the Trees playground every kid raised their hands yes I know it and uh, he asked what do you want to see in a playground you know we're, we're rebuilding the playground um, and every kid had something to add um, they were really excited. We heard a lot of pools. We heard a lot of um, 
you know, this, it's very traditional things that we knew, the slides, mm -hmm. everyone wants slides and swings, and, um, but we heard Dick's Sporting Goods, someone wants some Dick's Sporting Goods there. And um, some, someone en mentioned uh, flower steps, and I was thought that the designer said, write that down, and we wrote a few things down, but the flower steps, I thought to myself, well, that'll, that's cute, isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. Well, he incorporated that into the design, and at the end wow. of that day at wow. Shaker um, Lane, we um, ended up having a design day celebration. The designer took all that information, all the input from the kids, and created the original design that we were, we were working with and revealed it that night. So we took that design, we then reached out to the community and asked for feedback, and um, it, uh, on actually it was on design day that Joe Cataldo came out to Castle in the Trees, to the playground. Uh, Joe Cataldo from Cataldo Landscaping has um, offered to, or is going to, take away the old structure, mm -hmm. he's donating everything, take away the old structure and prepare the site for the new one. And he was over at uh, the site and said, there's some scraggly trees over there on the side and some, some old rocks, why don't we expand? So that day we had our design, but we ended up expanding based on oh, Joe's great. suggestion. So we have great. now have uh, more room for swings and a tire swing mm -hmm. and uh, building up the structure a little bit too. Yeah, so we changed the orientation of the swings which allowed us to add another climber in the back of the playground. Mm -hmm. Originally the tire swing was standalone at the back of the playground, now it's moved with the other swings and we were able to add a whole new climber and some more little, they're called maze cubes, mm -hmm. similar to what's at Castle now, which a lot of people were upset in the original in the design released in June, a lot of people were disappointed that there weren't a lot of maze cubes because kids like to play hide and seek and things like that. Right, right. And because we did expand, it was only 30 feet mm -hmm. further out, but it did allow us to add a whole other climber in the back, hmm. which is great. Now, are you planning on doing the same sort of artwork inside the cubes as well uh, that the current one has? Because that was one of the opportunities that I think children had to actually create some artwork that got applied to the sidewalls of the cubes. Yeah, so I think you're talking about the squares of yes, work that are yes. out there, and that was mm -hmm. done after the fact. So the build was 91, and I talked to uh, the Girl Scout troop um, that was in, there was a Girl Scout troop yep. that put up that artwork. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the year, but it was after the build. Sure, sure. I'm not sure that um, we're going to have that type of artwork there, okay. but um, if we do a full community build, um, part of the community input is actually painting on the structure. So if, um, when you see the new design, there's a uh, giant dragon, and that's going to be painted by the community, Good. as well as Good. those flower steps that I talked about, those mm -hmm. will also be painted. So right. there's an opportunity to have artwork on it, not exactly like mm -hmm. the, um, the, what the, the squares that are there now, right. but yes. So you, you brought up uh, Joe Cataldo and the landscaping side of it. So you've been very busy fundraising uh, for the, the castle. Um, Tell me a little bit about it. What are your fundraising goals? Um, there's been a lot of activity around that, a lot of hard work. So please tell us about that. So our uh, overall fundraising goal is $300,000. Um, about $225,000 of that is the actual playground structure. And then we're estimating about $75,000 for the site work, which Joe Cataldo has donated, which mm -hmm. is incredibly generous. Mm -hmm. um, we've had several fundraisers. We had a golf tournament at Shaker Hills back at the end of September. We raised $10,000. Wonderful. Yes. Um, and we've had small fundraisers. We just raised uh, almost $1,200 at the Holiday Bazaar about a week and a half ago. We were at the Bazaar again last year. We raised maybe eight or $900. But so we've had the Bazaar. Okay. We did, you know, we've had a table at every third Thursday the last two summers. We've had some corporate donors. Mm -hmm. um, and we got $100,000 through a state grant that we heard about this summer. Yeah, I think that's a, that's the really important part right, right there. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> yes. And uh, we had Representative Jim Arciaro and Senator, uh, State Senator Jamie Eldridge and the Board of Selectmen were very supportive in that and that was putting it through the state budget. Mm -hmm. So um, that means a lot to get that $100,000 in. Right. Um, right. And the fundraisers that Sarah's talking about, we, we've got about another $30,000 in the bank. We have a promise of $7,500 coming from the Cooper Foundation, um, and that's yes, we're Cooper, hoping to match that. Right. Um, so we do have other, other funds that are coming in, and we are right now, um, should I talk about what fundraising, additional fundraising? Yeah, by all means. Sure. And the other thing, too, is to tell us, you know, what's the gap between where you're planning sure, to be on a goal and yeah. uh, how much more you need. Yeah, so this is all, all, and all our figures here are dependent on if we, um, 
I do a, com a full community builder. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that one. Yeah. Um, but the three hundred thousand dollars that Sarah talked about, um, we are uh, two thirds of the way to our goal. So we're looking at raising another approximately ninety thousand mm. dollars to reach our goal. Um, and uh, in order to do that, we are hoping to now reach out a little bit more to some of the the, uh, the businesses in town looking mm -hmm. for cor corporate sponsorship. We right. have a list of. Um, components on the playground that you can sponsor. So, um, a slide. Define what a component sure, is. Sure, it's part please. of the playground. So, it could be a slide. You can sponsor a slide. Okay. Now, um, we'll have a sign when you first walk into the playground, and it will have a list of all those components, and it will have um, the sponsor's name next to it. Okay. So, um, and it's a, a variety of components. So, the bigger components are a more asking for a more expensive sponsorship mm -hmm. down to. What's the, 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 the. I forget. Several hundred dollars. Several hundred dollars. Um, you could buy a bench. By a bit. So will that be inclusive of the materials, uh, or is that just a donation? So in other words, the, the fundings you're referring to, that $100 for the bench, does that actually cover the cost of the materials, or is it just a, you know, a donation for the cause? The idea is that it covers the cost of the materials, yes. okay. that it covers the cost of that item. How about ongoing maintenance? Is that also going to be included in there by chance? or? So that's something we need to discuss. Um, so in 1991, uh, Littleton Children's Fund uh, built the playground and then uh, it was gifted. It's on town property, but they actually maintained it until just two years ago now. Mm -hmm. After we built Aiden's Playground, uh, we gifted Aiden's Playground to, to the town. Okay. Uh, again, it's on town property, but it had been maintained by the nonprofit. And it was Sarah and I were the only two left, so it only made sense that it went back to, mm -hmm. that it went to the Park and Rec Department. Right. So they maintain it now. Um, you know, right now we're focused on actually raising funds for the structure. Um, right. It does have um, a 30 to 40 year um, lifespan um, with hopefully much less maintenance than the existing playground. Yeah, the existing with the playground needed to be, um, the wood needed to be sprayed every year. Mm -hmm. There was a lot to do there. So hopefully there's less cost going into this, but certainly um, our goal is if we have additional funds that are raised, that would go to maintain the playground. Now, you years. mentioned synthetic materials uh, earlier, Sarah. Tell us a little bit about what, what it might be. Are we just talking about using synthetic planking, uh, and the structure still would be a wood structure. Tell us a little bit about that as far as the initial bill, which was a special southern yellow pine that uh, came up from uh, the south on very special trucking. So this is a special composite, plastic composite. So it looks similar to like the Trex decking, okay. but it's a very specific vendor that Leathers uses. And so we have to order those materials through Leathers. There are other things, um, other com parts of the program, and we have a full materials list that can be donated even by Target or Lowe's or Home Depot. Oh. So there are some things that we have to buy specifically through Leathers. There are other materials that we could get donated from local businesses. Or, you know, local families could go and, you know, buy some materials, specific materials at Target and then donate right. it to the playground. Right. So, talking about donations, so how do people get involved, or businesses in particular, since I, I think that's what your focus is right now, to the process of the rebuild, either financially or physically? Well, um, Financially, we accept uh, donations at any time. Um, we have a website, castleinthetrees.org, which is a lot of this information that we're talking about um, on the website. Um, we have a couple programs that we're doing besides the components uh, that could be sponsored. We have, um, there will be a giant fence around the playground and uh, there are pickets on that fence uh, that you can, for $75 each, you can have your name inscribed, um, three for 200. And so that's, um, we've, We've received about 75 so far mm -hmm. um, for that. Um, so be, and beyond the um, uh, the need for for funding, mm -hmm. um, I might be jumping ahead here, but we need okay. volunteers and for right, corporations right. Um, or individuals to reach out and help us with the volunteer base. If we do a community build, we are looking at. 700, I forget the number, about 700 volunteers. It's over a week-long period, okay. so there are a lot of volunteers. Right. But what we need right now, um, besides making that additional $90,000, is people to help with various committees that we have. Okay. In order. From the donation side, you're a 50C3, so this is tax deductible then yes. for people? That yes, that is correct. Um, I think people would be interested in knowing that Absolutely. that get a little bit kickback on the income tax time. Uh, so we talked about volunteering. Uh, what volunteering can be done now? Uh, what will they be doing? Uh, I know that you've got some issues with regards to committees and things along this line. So, uh, 
tell us a little bit about that. So we do have various committees that Leathers has said, you know, because this is what they do, they do community build. So if we do a full community build, there are certain committees that need to be filled. Fundraising is the big committee. Okay. Um, just, you know, and there's various things that could be done. Planning a small fundraiser, you know, like the Bazaar Third Thursday and organizing that. Um, soliciting businesses. We do have a whole packet. It's on our website. Sponsorship packet. We have various sponsorship levels starting $1,000 and on up. And um, different levels, you know, the higher you go, the more um, benefits you get. But $1,000 and up, will, there will be a permanent sign at the playground listing those sponsors. Um, so, we're, you know, the big thing right now, we need volunteers to help with the fundraising. We need volunteers to um, we have a volunteer committee, and that's, you know, if we have a small fundraiser like the Bazaar, Christy and I can't do everything ourselves. Right. We need other people to right. step up and help at these small, you know, events that we have. Um, there's the tool committee, which is organizing people to, don to loan their tools. When we do do the community build, um, we're going to need, you know, hammers and saws and, dr you know, drills. And so we'll need people to help, you know, so solicit loans of those tools so that we can use during the build. Yeah, and I just want to point out that while Sarah and I are the only two on the Littleton Children's Fund, which is the 501c3, mm -hmm. we do have um, a dozen people on a, um, com uh, a uh, rebuilds committee. Okay. Um, and they are a group of dedicated people. Um, they live busy lives, too. Um, Dave McManus on our committee put together the, the golf outing. Um, as Sarah mentioned, we raised $10,000. So we have people that are committed. Mm -hmm. Now we need to get even more people right. involved. And what we will have is... Um, we do have a packet of information on the website that lists the volunteers, and we'll be posting that on our website, it's too. It's on our website now. With the names of the people who have... Okay. Right, right so, so you know um, who's in, on what group. So how often does your group get together? I'm just trying to think of, you know, you're saying you want to get more people involved. So tell us a little bit about how often you folks meet, where you might usually meet, things along that line. So the Castle Rebuild Committee meets the first Tuesday of every month. And um, we try to meet in the small meeting room in the basement of the Ruben Hoare Library, so everyone knows where we are. And it's at 7 o'clock. Excellent, excellent. Now, um, how will the community at large be involved in the actual rebuild process? And I know we've talked about that uh, a little bit. Is it going to be anything like the first build? So we hope it is, and that is what our goal is right now. Um, so in 1991, or starting earlier than that, um, it was, it was, this all started with a, a group of people who wanted a playground in, in Littleton, and there wasn't one at the time. Right. Um, and I have been fortunate enough to talk with some of those people, including yourself, who were involved in the original build. And um, I, I think there, there's a lot of pride there when you talk to these people. We have one woman on our committee, um, Jess Cameron, who uh, was seven at the time of the build, and she remembers Painting screws, I think. Soaping mm -hmm. screws. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, soaping screws. And um, you know, there's a lot of pride that comes with building a playground. Mm -hmm. And um, so we hope that we can do that. Um, in, and we're, our goal is to have the build in September of 2016, and that's assuming that we raise the funds right. and get the volunteers. Right. And so if we do that, if we get the funds and we get additional volunteers to help with these committees, mm -hmm. um, what it will look like is uh, we're planning for end of September, and it will be a Tuesday through a Sunday. Is that right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Tuesday through a Sunday, probably two weeks before. We haven't figured out that mm -hmm. timing. Mm -hmm. um, the playground would be closed for Cataldo Landscaping to come out and remove the old structure and right. put in the new or right. prepare the, the uh, site for mm -hmm. the new one. Mm -hmm. um, we might need a little more time for that, so expect the playground to be closed for six to eight weeks, depending. Right. Right. Um, and then... On those different committees, the food committee, we would have a tent out with vol uh, food donated by people. We would have, um, we're going to reach out to um, businesses. Uh, there are a lot of businesses that will allow um, employees, maybe a group of a dozen employees, to come out and work for the day, similar to a Habitat for Humanity structure. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that... Um, the uh, MCI Concord prisoners came out in 1991 to help, mm -hmm. and uh, the minimum security prisoners. And that's something that we would certainly reach out to. And that's, again, hoping we're hoping to get people on the volunteer committee who would help us to get all those volunteers that right. we need for right. Right. September. So let, let's, we've been kind of getting around it, the issues here. Um, what are the critical path things that need to happen for the community bill to actually occur? Because it sounds as if 
things don't happen in a particular way and certain events don't occur, then we're looking at a much larger price tag possibly for the overall rebuild of the castle. Right. If we don't get, so we had set a goal of January 1st to fill the, the committees that need to be filled. Mm -hmm. I, th we're, I think we're, we're really hoping to have a community build, so we're, we're pushing back our deadline a little bit. But if we don't get more people to step up now mm -hmm. and start, you know, and help fill these committees and start, or because we need people in place now to, you know, we, we need to start soliciting donations of food and tools and we need to get people who can help solicit groups of volunteers. Right. So we need a few people on every committee now mm -hmm. um, in order to move forward with the community build. We can't wait until June or July to suddenly start filling these committees and because if we don't fill them in June or July then we can't do the community build and that would be too late. So what does that mean if we can't do a community build? What does it mean from a cost perspective? If we can't do a community build then Leather's associates themselves would do the, build, the full build and instead of a five-day build it would be a four-week build so the playground would be closed for much longer because you have to close it for the site work and then it would be closed for a lot longer for them to build it. It's also $130,000 additional because it costs, you know, because they have to supply all the labor as, you know, if we do a community build, it's free volunteer labor. So, so $140,000 if Littleton gets together and starts focusing on this project um, that we can save, otherwise right. it's going to be more out of people's pocketbooks. Right. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a huge incentive to, a, mon a huge monetary incentive to do a community build. And um, in our discussions with Leathers and Associates, their model is a community build. And they've been doing this for a while and they've been doing it well. Um, but they have said that they're starting to do a few full contracts because it's hard to find volunteers these days. Um, but our hope is, and we have people on our committee that really are hoping that this can be a community build. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as, if we get the volunteers, we won't have to raise an additional 130,000, which, you know, an additional right. 90,000 seems daunting enough. Right. Um, that would be, you know, looking at two, over $200,000 right. that right. we need to raise now if we did the, the full um, contractor build. And my guess is we would not be building in September of 2016. Oh. Um, it, just because we'd have that much more money to raise. Right. 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 So that's why we really would like to push for the community build. Are, are there any other variations besides the either the community builds it or we hire a, a vendor to come in and do it? Are, are there some sort of hybrid pieces that might be in between there that we can make call on some of the uh, local businesses or building professionals to get involved? Um, well, it's something that we talked about with Leathers and trying to find out where that hybrid is. And from their perspective, it's hard. They can't come up with an estimate because for what a hybrid might be. Right. Um, and, and there are opportunities to lower the price. And this is more, in, again, through the community build because mm -hmm. people can, as Sarah had mentioned before, donate materials. Right. So that would help to lower the cost. Sure. Um, we talked with them briefly about maybe having them do the full construction of the playground itself and maybe having volunteers come out and just do the fence. Um, but again, that's still, the cost is still a lot higher. Right. It might right. save $10,000, but we're still looking at a higher cost. So finding that hybrid, is it possible? Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to figure out what it looks like though. So I know you folks were at the Holiday Bazaar. What was the purpose of you folks being there? Um, Really, we want to get our message out that we are rebuilding the playground. There are still some people that, you know, don't know that the playground is, you know, 25 years old and needs to be replaced. So we're just trying to get our message out there that, you know, we are trying to replace the playground mm -hmm. um, and keep a safe and fun playground in the community. Um, and we were, you know, soliciting for volunteers. Um, and also to raise money. You know, we had the raffle, we have apparel, we have t-shirts and baseball hats and water bottles and mugs and car magnets and car stickers, <laughs> um, which the list is all goes available. On. They're all available on our website. Um, so we have that there. But, you know, really, we're just trying to get the word out that we're, we're trying to rebuild the playground and, you know, we need volunteers and we need money. Right, yeah. right. And I'd like to point out that the day, no, just two, two days or three days before the bazaar, we um, had the final 3D 
drawing. And that's what you see behind us right now is the new drawing of the castle tree. So we had the de design before, but it was just, uh, what is it, the spec? The, 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 uh, the orthographic Orth projection. Yes, yeah, and so right. now we have the three-dimensional. And I, I have to say, I was, the, I was the one who picked it up. We had it done at Staples, and I went to pick it up. And, you know, it's a two-foot by three-foot board. Um, and the person uh, who handed it to me, who's a 20-year-old, yeah. and he said, he looked and he goes, is this a playground? And I said, yes. He goes, wow, that's cool. And he said, I'm in architectural school and I really like this. I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> so that was, so we, were, we actually um, brought that to the bazaar and people got to see it for the first time. And it great. does, it really looks impressive in this 3D design. You can really see what it's going to look like. So what was the response, the public response to you know, one being there and telling the story about what you were doing? Were people anxious to sign up at that point in time and to volunteer? or were they kind of kicking the tires to get more information and understand what it's all about? We, you know, we had um, some good conversations with people and a couple, found a couple people who uh, were there in 1991. I don't think, we had a couple of people sign up the forms to mm -hmm. volunteer, but this is a lot to take on. You need to really process it and right. ask some questions and right. figure out what, your, what the commitment is gonna be. Okay. And we're willing to talk to anybody about that. If there okay. is any interest out there with volunteering, I think the best thing to do um, you know, we can do write-ups about what the committee might be, but to be quite honest, Sarah and I, we've never done a community build like this before. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't necessarily know absolutely every bit of what it's going to entail, right. um, but we're willing to talk to anybody about what opportunities there are and where the best, where the most need is. So if you have somebody who's interested in being part of the, the committee or heading a committee, um, you folks would be able to give them at least some conversation points to tell them what it's about, uh, what it's entailing, and uh, time commitment that's there. Because that's, yes. I think, the biggest thing that's a little daunting, I think, to a lot of times to handle a, a large committee that has multiple facets that have to come up on a critical timeline. Absolutely. And that's why we're hoping that um, uh, many hands make light work. And the more people that step up to volunteer, right. Um, right. it won't be overwhelming for everybody. And also, there are many opportunities within the volunteering you know so if you if you can't come to the meetings but you can do you know make phone calls or send emails you know that's great you know or if you do want you know, if you can you know have a couple of hours mm -hmm. to help with events so mm -hmm. you know don't think you have to come to every meeting or be at every event you know that we have a lot of opportunities for volunteering and some of them you know can be done from home so so it sounds like uh, uh, some of your volunteers could actually be senior citizens that have to make the phone calls to, to check on things or solicit uh, donations of tools absolutely so there's a, a wide interest range as far as the, the volunteers you're looking for then yes Definitely. and also a large a wide um, time commitment you know if you can only give a couple hours a week we we will take anyone who can donate any time uh -huh. very good now how does uh, the, 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 the committee uh, communicate information about what's happening. What's, what's the process to get that information out to Littleton residents about what the current status is, what the possible volunteer opportunities are? I know you mentioned a website, but you know, how can people get involved or, or see what the status is like besides tuning in to LCTV and, and then finding out about what's happening? Because I hope you're coming back again to tell us more. Right. Well, definitely LCTV. Um, we're excited to be here about it. Um, we have uh, an email distribution list. Um, we have a Facebook um, account, and we have the website. Uh, we do have a person who has signed on for marketing. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, great. To head that up. So hopefully we will be getting more information out. It's, it's, uh, it's difficult for us to communicate effectively with there's so many different modes and, and Facebook is easy and the website but we realize that's not um, reaching uh, that's reaching a small percentage of the population mm -hmm. so we're hoping to get out more information in newspapers too and then here on LCTV and uh, Tiger News um, and uh, obviously coming to the meetings but that can only accommodate a few people what other um, what am I missing I think that's mm -hmm. That's it but if you, if you, you know, we do try and post regularly on Castle in the Trees, on fa the group on Facebook. There's okay. Castle in the Trees group. There's also Castle in the Trees page on Facebook. Okay. Um, and if anyone's interested, we do have an e email distribution list. It's um, the email is Castle in the Trees at hotmail.com. Okay. Right. Send us your name if you want to be on the list. And we don't, we send out 
uh, infrequent, I mean, updates, but we don't inundate you with emails. And, and we don't share the list with anyone. List. Good, good, good. Now, you mentioned a possible date. So if we're, we're in a community belt situation and everything happens and Jupiter aligns with Mars, uh, <laughs> when might we be looking at a possible build week? We're looking at September, I forget the exact dates, <laughs> September 20th through... 27? Yes, yeah, something, something like that. Like we yes. haven't it hasn't locked the date in sure. with leathers yet, but that's what, that's what we've been talking about. We okay. will be It'll hopefully be of September. Right. locking in the date soon. Yes. Right. Yeah, we, we do have to lock it in, even, and hopefully um, we'll lock it in. Um, we just need to follow up with a, like the police department, just make sure that's okay, sure. Um, and then work towards that, the community build. If the community build doesn't happen, Obviously, those right. dates, dates will change. Right, and that, again, that's the big caveat that we, we need to make certain people understand is if it's not a community build, then we're talking <coughs> about a much longer period of time right. that, that the castle is out of order right. and uh, a little bit more on the expense side. <laughs> now, is there anything else that the CRC wants to pass along to residents or to businesses? No donation is too small. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I just... Um, check the P.O. box and we had a $25 donation. So, you know, no donation is too small. I mean, we would love the larger corporate donations, sure. obviously. Sure. But, you know, this is a community playground. It is a community, you know, um, asset. So... Um, to be shared by all. To be shared by all. And it's a grassroots effort. So, you yeah. know. And we love, we love um, input from the community and ideas too, mm -hmm. not just funding. So any speak up, help. I mean, it's a it's a great playground. Right. It really is, and um, it's going to continue to be great. Aiden's playground brought in a lot of lot more kids, mm -hmm. and to have the castle updated and expanded with the swings, um, and having the the basketball courts there. Mm -hmm. It's just a fabulous place, and it's a fabulous uh, yeah. addition to Littleton. I right. Mean. So you'll be able to take care of the, the little kids up till, what, um, middle school, and then you've got the basketball courts that are there, and uh, the so... The walking track around the walking track, track, right. Courts, yeah. So it's a really nice hub for uh, Littleton residents or for our yes. friends in Westford as well. That's right, and, and there are plenty of people from surrounding communities really? who come to the castle. Really? Good. Yes, Absolutely. and you do not have to be a Littleton resident to be involved with the Castle Rebuild Committee. Either volunteering or financially, we correct. Welcome, right. you know, because it is a community <laughs> playground, it does draw from area towns, and yep. we welcome everyone. It, we are not exclusive in our thank you. committee <laughs> members. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Christy and Sarah, for uh, coming thank in and you. sharing information about the CRC. Uh, we look forward to future updates uh, that, as plans continue to firm up, letting us know what's happening. Uh, this is a very important project uh, for Littleton as far as community, community building, not only building a playground, but also the, the side benefits of bringing the community together for a project. So we look forward to you folks coming back in and joining us and telling us about the, uh, the project. We'd love to. Thank Good. you. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in.